going live in just a moment and <laughs> we are we should be we're live cool so today's broadcast might be a little bit laggy because I'm actually streaming twice at once what um this device here is a telepresence robot set up with letsrobot.tv and it has another camera on it right here um, which is streaming to a live server that is at bit.ly slash 3PO the E's are threes and the I and the O are one and zero if you want to go check it out right now uh, you can see I've got it up on my phone So that's a view from my desktop from this guy, which is kind of amazing! Um, wow, yeah, everything at once. I got really interested in telepresence robots and building such as a way to fly less for climate change reasons. And I think it's also just totally fascinating because telepresence sucks right now. And uh, there's a lot of ways to make it better. In fact, I have a talk tonight at Dorkbot San Francisco. If you're around, you should totally come. It's a human-made, a new uh, tech shop-like maker, uh, uh, makerspace-like space. And I'm really excited to tell people about the cool stuff that I've been researching about what's the cutting edge in telepresence, what's the next thing we can build. And so that's why I interviewed for Hackster, um, Alex Hornstein from Looking Glass Factory. There's one with Jerry Ellsworth of Tilt 5, which just launched on Kickstarter coming up. Uh, it's not technically present telepresence, but there's some telepresence stuff in there, and it's very exciting. Um, there's, uh, well, there's a bunch of other stuff that I'll go over on Hackster later on after I've actually done the talk. But what I want to talk about today is Let's Robot.TV. This is one, it's developed by Jillian Ogle, and you can find the, I mean, it's literally just Let's Robot.TV, that's the URL. And if you go on, you can see all these robots that people have connected, and uh, you can even control them with the controls along the top of the screen, which is very exciting. Um, so mine is actually on there, you can see 3PO at the top left, and that's currently broadcasting, although all it's doing is sort of showing my same face here, so you probably aren't that interested in that, but there's like big claw one that you can control, it's got its whole own currency ecosystem, you've got all these wonderful privacy controls and other things to make sure that the, the culture stays good, and then... Um, yeah, it has a bunch of really great tutorials. So uh, one of the main things that people do with this is make uh, the default kit, which is, um, where's the link to it? Na, 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 well, they have a shop where you can buy the sort of default kit for it. Um, for example, let's see, buy a robot kit. There's this parallaxy robot, and most of them are designed to be driven around uh, so that people can remotely drive them around and then they can do text-to-speech, so they type stuff in the chat box and the robot speaks it in the real world. Uh, this one I have the microphone disabled because A, feedback, and also B, uh, uh, there are also other people in the office conducting business. A hackster is a business, and I don't want to broadcast our business to the world. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah, all these excellent guides on things like Robocasting 101, how you actually uh, should set up your robot to make it useful for people and workable. Um, how to build your robot in different ways, different things that you can program it to do. I want to put a laser pointer on mine so that people can point at stuff and maybe even play with cats or whatever, if there's ever cats around, should I be so lucky. Um, you can enable other robotic functions, you can buy a kit. There's a couple of projects on Hackster that are already using Let's Robot TV. For example, the Plotty Body, a V-plotter that draws on the wall and you can control from the internet. Um, there's That points to this other one about uh, streaming to the web from a Raspberry Pi. <sighs> Pardon me. Oh, and here's a here's the browser version of what I just showed you. <laughs> here's me yawning a few seconds ago. <laughs> uh, the 
camera angle on that one is not nearly as flattering, but yeah, uh, that's enough of that. That's it. The same bit.ly slash 3PO link I posted up. These are my settings and stuff. I'm not going to scroll down because there's a bunch of like personal keys and things. So the successor to Let's Robot.tv is Remo.tv, which is currently in development, and uh, you can go check out their Twitter to keep up with it. Um, you, right now, all you can really do is log into this dev server. They have an, oh, pardon, an internet-controlled trash can. Also, this one, uh, the Zoop Zone Max, which seems to usually be online. You can um, change the color of this LED. At least you could before. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, you can turn all the colors up at once, all of them down at once, so it goes dimmer. Then let's bring up the green again. Isn't that cool? We're controlling this uh, RGB LED just over the internet with these buttons in the browser, and you can do this too. You can make your own robot that does stuff like this. All kinds of cool stuff. Um, I stuck a C920 camera on mine because that's what the default settings in the tutorial are for. But I do have a Raspberry Pi camera connected to my Pi, and I also have a Stereo Pi system from Crowd Supply. Thank you, Crowd Supply. And that would enable me to uh, do like one camera facing forward and one of them facing at the ground so people could see where they're driving, as suggested to me by a friend. Um, or do stereo 3D vision, you know, whatever. And uh, you can go on GitHub to find all the code for these things. Here's the one for the new system, remo.tv. It's just github.com slash remo.tv slash controller. You can follow Jillian Ogle, the creator of this project. Super cool. <laughs> she was on the cover of Make a little while back. Uh, I'm trying to get her on the show so that we can have a sweet interview. Really stoked about that. And you can also still follow Let's Robot, but I think it's eventually going to be deprecated in favor of Remo once it becomes... <sighs> once it becomes more of a... a ready for deployment kind of thing out of the dev stage. Oh, I'm so excited about this. One thing that I want to do is create robot avatars that I can send to give talks in my stead so that instead of shipping my human body, you know, hundreds of miles uh, and back again, I can send a robot one way, then they can just have it there and anyone can sort of, would be able to sort of inhabit the robot and give talks or interact with whatever office or venue through that, uh, which I think would be fantastic. Imagine using this to attend conferences and things. It would be pretty baller. Uh, so, yeah, telepresence ideas, let's robot ideas. Oh, I'm going to keep working on this over the next few days and keep posting updates and things. Uh, one of the next things I want to do is make it solar powered, which I'm not sure if it's feasible to get enough solar power in our office to keep something like this running. Maybe it would just be during business hours. Oh, <laughs> why am I so sleepy? Um, and uh, make a chassis for it out of recycled plastic, which is another thing that I've been cranking on in recent days. I've got all these chips of HDPE, which is high-density polyethylene plastic, which you can melt at home and turn into, uh, you can mold it, you can uh, mill it, and things like that. Uh, turn it into blocks for turning on a lathe, any kind of stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with it and hopefully coming out with some fun electronic projects using that. Not only telepresence robots, but other cool sh stuff as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, a little bit more about 3PO before I uh, sign off. So this guy has a Matrix creator on board, but is not currently using it. And same with the Raspberry Pi up, or the ca Pi camera there. Uh, it is a Pi 4. This is the one that we were sent a while ago. And uh, these ears are designed by Anouk Vipracht, the amazing international fashion tech designer. She's such a cool person. And uh, she's doing some really cool stuff right now as well with Cirque du Soleil and Sense, which I think you should totally check out because that's fascinating as well. All right, so 3PO will be evolving. Hopefully have like a little robot arm and a little uh, laser pointer to control.
We'll see. And uh, in the meantime, share any robots that you've built with this stuff. You can check out the links below to uh, see the tutorials for building a couple of them on Hackster. And I'm going to put up a tutorial on this one as well as soon as it's any, in any kind of shape to uh, actually post as a tutorial. All right. Have an awesome rest of your What the Wednesday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Wish me luck with my talk.